say thanks so much for giving me this opportunity. No problemo. We all got a leg up somewhere along the line. So, this is TV format development. You'll be expected to do whatever. Make tea, go out for coffees, photocopying. Brilliant. This is brilliant. And just through here, we've got the mineshaft. <laughs> so, you'll basically be dividing your time between helping out the programme development team and digging for coal in the mine. Uh, wow. I... I didn't know you did coal. Oh, yeah. Always done coal. Everyone needs coal. Coal's something you can rely on. Cole doesn't turn round and suddenly tell you that Dick and Dom aren't very BBC Three. <laughs> right. Now, you'll need these. The Blackberries, in case anyone needs a latte or something urgently, so you can come straight up. And the Canaries to tell you if the mine's filling up with poisonous gas, cos if it is, it'll start to die. Right, OK. I mean, I'm not, um... This is... Obviously, I really want this job. It's just... Look, this is TV. Yeah. Maybe one day, in a few years' time, you'll be researching on any dream will do. But before that, there's a hell of a lot of mining to get through. Oh, he's off his food. It's the Helivet! Where's the pet in peril? And who's the concerned owner? I am. Don't worry, little girl. We'll soon have your gerbil scampering hither and thither about his cage again. It's dead. Rolling around in his sand bath. It's dead. Chewing up an empty bog roll. It's stiff and smelly. We can save him. We can't. Come on. We're the Helivets. Well, the important thing when writing a sports movie is not to get too bogged down in the so-called rules of the sport. Yeah, I mean, this was our first film writing project, so initially we didn't really know where to start. I suppose we just started typing. Yeah, and, and luckily there's this pop-up in Microsoft Word that says, it looks like you're trying to write a heartwarming British underdog movie. Would you like some help? and then you just have to enter the character names and the context. So we put Wimbledon, but then it popped up. There is already a heartwarming British underdog movie called Wimbledon. Are you sure you want to replace it? So then we had to think again, and in the end, we almost deliberately went for a sport that no one knows much about. Well, almost deliberately, because as it turns out, some people know quite a lot about cricket, unlike us. Yeah. In a time past hope, in a world gone to crap, one man had an idea. Here, look, lads, look what I've found. Calm down, Arthur. There's no point getting excited about anything. The steel mine's closed and we're on the scrappy. It's official. No, but look, earn big pounds playing cricket. Well, it sounds fine, Arthur, but cricket here in Yorkshire, don't talk soft. Did I hear someone say cricket? <laughs> That's a word I've not heard in a long time. What would you know about cricket? I only used to coach the Manchester United team. <laughs> the year they won the European Cricket Cup. But to us, you, you seem like some mad old drunk. That's the other thing about me. Apart from knowing about cricket. It was the ashes. I could have won them, but I bowled a wide. <laughs> you bowled a wide in the ashes final? How can you live with your sen? <laughs> I know! Enter the ashes, you lot. You've taken the piss. Why not? Arthur's a dab and with a silly mid on, and Pete can do follow ons like no one's ever seen. Come on, let us enter. We've got stumps in us blood. Oh, you won't be talking like that when you have to face the West Indies in the second round. They've won the Ashes every year since they beat the Dallas Cowboys in 1978. Well, we'll just have to practice our catching and throwing and penalties and that. Run! Run! Ten! Nine! Come on, lads! 
You've got to back more. But the mat is so narrow, it's perverse. First rule of cricket, never call the bat narrow. <laughs> what the bat is, is very, very wide and very, very short. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, carry on bowling and try and do that thing with your hand and your wrist where you make it bounce funny. <laughs> Underdogs, but anyone who saw them beat Yugoslavia at cricket in the semis by 400 wickets to seven runs, all of it for eight, will know that they're not to be underestimated. And West Germany, famously a bunch of cheats. As ever. Looks like we're about to lose. I want to tell you a story. I knew a young man who had a dream. A dream to win the Ashes. That young man was me. But he bowled a wide and became a drunk. That is, I bowled a wide and became a drunk. So don't do that! Now it's your turn to be the team that stands in pairs with the bats rather than the ones in a sort of spread out crowd chucking it around. <laughs> so make the most of that. And remember, there's no such thing as a draw in cricket. <laughs> What a run. This summer, from the location manager of Billy Elliot and the catering staff who brought you the full Monty. Yes! I remember what they taught you! No! No, not that! I was wrong! Featuring someone who was very nearly in Brassed Off comes a film to touch the child in all of us, but not in that way. They're bringing urns and sandwiches onto the pitch. They think it's tea. It is now. <laughs> and this is for the ashes. I can't believe they've done it. They've actually done it. In cinemas this summer, the full number of overs that are scheduled to be bowled that day. <laughs> and remember, lads, it isn't over until the full number of overs that are scheduled to be bowled that day have been bowled! Open June 25th. Which has all been restored to how we think it would have looked when the rooms were originally laid out in the 18th century. Just sit. Just sit. Just sit. I, I found it. I... <laughs> so, is this really your mother's house, sir? Dear Mama. I keep telling her to get Sky Plus. And this room is still known as the Hanover Bedroom, as it is believed that George II stayed here not long after his accession. Um, and I believe still remained a friend of the family for some time after. Excuse me, what the hell do you think you're doing? Security! Tell Mama I won't be dining tonight. <laughs> you two, out. But we're not having sex! We're not having sex! I shall report you to my mother, Lady House. <laughs> Danger! I think my nemesis has corrupted even my beloved mother. <laughs> In a country lacerated by the sharp shards of broken brown eyed promises, in a world bent low by the burden of disease, war, and the price of Thunderbird, who is left to make full account to God of Britain's depleted moral minibar? Yes, it's the surprising adventures of me, Sir Digby Chicken Caesar. <laughs> I am overtaking, but we're on a hill. What, sir? Oh my God! The rolls! Oh, have your nemesis' henchmen turned it into an old banger again, sir? I think not. 
This bears all the hallmarks of the Countess. Countess, we meet again. Scott James! This is my valet and handyman, Ginger, a good man in a crisis. Thank you, sir. Just to say, if I get any more sober, my dead kidney will start to throb again. He's got jams! If I may. He's got jams! Now, Countess, tell me, are you a gift that to me? He's got jams! <sighs> are you in league with my nemesis? There's a soggy pack of Rothmans in that bag. You are! He's got jams! Ginger! Beat the crap out of her. Um, I'm sorry, Countess. I'm going to have to confiscate your jewels. You put them on yourself. How will I break the unholy alliance between the Countess and my nemesis? How will I tell friend from foe if not by asking them for a quid and then pushing them over? Is it true that if you sneak into the London Eye, they'll let you sleep there? Find out next week in The Surprising Adventures of Sir David Chicken Caesar. This one's just for a dog shit, sir. <laughs> This is just the birth certificate of her estranged daughter. What a wasted day! <laughs> I think it makes you 19 times more the man, but it doesn't. Alan has 19 penises, <laughs> which, after the watershed, we can show you. Come on, that's got to be worth a look. I mean, to start with, you just think it's normal. You think everyone's got 19 penises. Continuing our people who've grown into spectacularly the wrong shape season, you get the chance to have a good old stare without feeling guilty. That's the man who had so many penises he was worth making a television programme about later tonight. Roll up, roll up. So the RSPCA are looking for a song to go on their new advert. They're trying to catch some criminals who've been letting dogs out of their kennels. So basically, someone's let the dogs out, but they don't know who's let them out. <laughs> Can we think of an appropriate song? <laughs> How about Freedom by George Michael? <laughs> by the Rivers of Babylon? What we need is something to really punch home the idea that these dogs are being let out onto the streets with nowhere to go and nothing to eat. Who let the dogs out? They don't know. That's why they're putting out the ad. <laughs> Look at it this way. What, what would I choose if you'd let the dogs out? If who'd let the dogs out? You, if you'd let the dogs out. <laughs> Please release me. <laughs> Let's leave that one and come back to it. Uh, maybe this one will be easier. It's for a TV station. They're looking for a song to advertise the film Roxanne. Uh, you know, the Steve Martin film, Roxanne? No, I'm struggling. Can you give us something more to go on? Um, it, it's on a Monday night. Blue Monday? Oh, I like the Monday bit. Roxanne? Yes, the, the film Roxanne with Daryl. <laughs> By the rivers of Babylon? <laughs> well, that, let's revisit that one after lunch. OK, th this last one is for a documentary. Uh, Michael Palin is going to be trekking along the rivers near where the Babylonians once lived. <laughs> Anyone? By the rivers of Babylon? That's right, he's going to be looking at civilizations from that area. <laughs> Nothing immediately jumps to mind. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit more parsley. That's it. Perfect. That smells amazing. You've really turned this place around over the last few months, Chris. You've suddenly got the magic touch when it comes to soup. Well, Alan, what can I say? Just makes a lovely change from working in robotics. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh, here, I want you to try something. Taste one. Oh, my God. It's soup. That's right. <laughs> Solid soup. Soup you can hold in your hand. Chris, you're a genius. <laughs> Thanks. Go on, take an hour off. Get back for the lunchtime rush. Thanks, boss. Bean soup, chicken soup, soup with macaroni, cream of broccoli, minestrone, potato soup, tomato soup, chowder make clay. Hey, that, that's my iPod and copy of perfume by Patrick Suskind. <laughs> oh!
Just be sure you're okay to work, Chris. Yeah, I'm fine. Needs a bit more zing. Just be sure you're okay to work, Chris. Chris? I, I don't know. Bad day. I'll, I'll be fine tomorrow. You can't smell anymore, can you? What? Ever since that guy hit you, you can't smell your hand in front of your face. Don't be ridiculous. I, I, I can smell perfectly. I, I can smell that clove of garlic down there. <laughs> Where? Just, just down here. Yes. <laughs> I knew I could smell garlic. I see. Oh, blimey, Pete. That's a bit of a fruity guff you just did. Oh, yeah. Sorry, boss. Oh, yeah. Bloody hell, Pete. Smells like something's crawled up your ass and died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. Nobody farted. <laughs> look down, look down That lonesome road Before you travel on Well, if I can't smell You'll just have to smell for me. I smell. <laughs> you smell. OK, robot. Smell and identify the objects. I obey. Lost, lost, cannot see, can only smell. Help, help, help. <laughs> cannot reach. Cheese. Brilliant. It works. Cheese. Uh, no, flowers. Never mind, let's keep trying. Cheese. OK. Cheese. Petrol. It's actually petrol, but good. Petrol. Oh, bollocks. Cheese. Good. Petrol. Good. Petrol. Uh, OK, well, let's try this. Cheese. Well, I suppose that'll have to do. Welcome to Back to Life, Back to Reality. The show that adds an un to the phrase safe revival of cryogenically frozen billionaires. And an ear to the phrase responsible treatment of reanimated cadavers. When cryogenics company Frozen Stiff underwent liquidation earlier this year, we became the first TV show ever to own some frozen people to make telly fun for you. <laughs> That's right, we literally own their asses. When these boys were frozen back in the 40s... That's pre-Hollyoaks, history fans. They expected to be defrosted carefully and when it was appropriate to do so. We haven't got time for that. We've got a TV show to make. Let's have a look at what these boys have been up to after being warmed up a bit and fiddled about with by the production team to make them work in... Back to life. Back to reality. <laughs> it's the third day in the house and there's big trouble for Howard P. Getty. He's sprung a leak. Yes, they're not filled with blood and guts like you and me. They're filled up with some chemicals put in by expert chemists, specialists. Without those chemicals, they will die. Y you know, properly. So we've given the other housemates the task of fixing Howard. Cliff Richards, no relation, has got the box of repairing stuff. Our medical team reckon Howard's got about three minutes left, give or take. Let's see how they get on. Oh, that's really not going to help. Professor von Strausenberg there has been distracted by a CD. He's just got no idea what it is. And look at that. 
It seems as if a couple of the prof's fingers have actually dropped off. Bolt there, doing his best, but when you're only ahead, you can't be much more than an ideas man. So he's just chewing a starburst there. Being from the 40s, that's probably his very first starburst. Do you remember your first starburst? Why not text in about that? Might as well. Looks like time is running out for poor old Howard. <laughs> Look at that! He's fixed himself! With the professor's dropped-off fingers, they've made perfect bungs for his chemical leaking holes. And where's the professor gone? Surely he'd want to see that his loss wasn't in vain? He's trying to refreeze himself! <laughs> Unlucky, Professor. You might have once been a Nobel Prize-winning physicist, but now you're ours. Morning, horse. Lovely day. Sorry about yesterday. I, I know things got a bit... Uh, well, I think we were both. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Let's... Uh, where do we get up to? <clears throat> right. <clears throat> Je m'appelle horse. <laughs> Je m'appelle horse. <laughs> okay, so after me. Je. Je. Come on, I know it's early. Je m'appelle horse. You're not even trying, are you? You're not even trying. And this is why I get a little bit, you know, just. Je. 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 Will you just at least make an effort, you long-faced sack of shit? <laughs> je, je, God, it's like pulling teeth with you. You just don't care, do you? You don't care at all. All the effort I put in. Je, 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 je. Right, forget it. That's fine. You just carry on feeding your face. <laughs> don't worry about me. <laughs> no one else makes me like this. Pig doesn't give me this bollocks. <laughs> And the great advantage is that not only does it taste of chocolate, it also works in exactly the same way as real soil. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to admit to being a little bit nervous about this next item because the guy we're going to be talking to is, let me tell you, absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I, I thought he was on at the end. What? The guy who was sectioned. Oh, yeah, he is. I'm talking about the comedian. <laughs> oh, right! I, I, was, I was getting confused, cos later on we have got a real schizo on. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, our next guest is crazy in a different and less harrowing way. But, um, before we meet him, let's see a clip of his new show, Two Sugars, see vous play. Well, it's been a really tough day and I'm beginning to wonder if that whole drunken bet was a good idea after all. I mean, making a cup of tea for everyone in Belgium. What was I thinking? Uh, monsieur... Uh, uh, monsieur, a tasse de tea? Oh, I haven't even looked up the French word for tea. I'm so crazy. Why don't I get myself into these heartwarming scrapes? Making a cup of tea for everyone in Belgium. Crazy idea. I know. <laughs> where, where did that all spring from? Well, this is all actually Ricky Gervais's fault. Damn you, Gervais! <laughs> uh, I call him Ricky. I know him. No, uh, <laughs> what it was was I, I was at a party with Ricky Gervais, uh, who did uh, The Office and Extras, and he was talking to me, uh, which I'm quite used to. And uh, a certain amount of drink had been taken. <laughs> I expect you mean a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I... I kind of did that joke. And I said, and, you know, God knows where I get these things from, I bet I could make a cup of tea for everyone in Belgium. And Ricky said, why? So, obviously, that was a challenge I couldn't ignore. <laughs> Priceless, cos, of course, this isn't the first drunken bet from a famous person you've got yourself mixed up in, is it? No. <laughs> Just looking at all, all your books and DVDs, there's crossing Africa in a carrier bag, uh, <laughs> building a cathedral out of ham, <laughs> licking Hillary Clinton's face. <laughs> I mean, my problem is I just keep having these crazy-sounding but endearingly adolescent ideas, and then I'm forced to write shows and books and make TV programmes about them. I mean, sometimes I wish that I could just have the crazy bet uh, without it furthering my career in any way, but, of course, no-one will let me. 
not least your flatmates, I should imagine, because they all have a tendency to get involved in drunken bets and then publish books about them as well, don't they? <laughs> Afraid so, yeah. <laughs> uh, it did get a bit crowded back in the flat when Steve was setting up the merchant bank in the bath and Pete was using camels instead of the tube for a year and I invited everyone with the same birthday to come and live with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. And then we had to find somewhere to put all the money. <laughs> <laughs> Time for Master's Cheese. Oh, thanks. No, Cheeseoid, that's not cheese, that's petrol. Petrol? Yes. But petrol goes in car. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, Cheeseoid, you filled the tank with brie. Petrol. Shut up. Sorry, Master. Cheeseoid hates self. <laughs> Cheddar status, 10 days to use by date. Free status, 48 hours to use by date. Premier status, in June. <coughs> Petrol status, 4. Petrol status, 4. Shut up, Petrol. cheeseoid! <laughs> Eight sound. Hate so, hate so, hate so. Cheese oil. Cheese oil. Cheese oil kills self. Cheese oil kills self with petrol. <laughs> Why petrol not burn? No cheese oil. That's not petrol. 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 That's cheese. Not petrol. No. I hate so. <laughs> My cheeseoid exists. Cheeseoid so lonely. So when do they use the kilns? I just told you, they don't use kilns. There are no kilns. What, so you're telling me that you don't have to heat up milk to turn it into cheese? That's exactly what I'm saying. You don't get cheese just by cooking milk. But that's how it was discovered. Someone left some milk on a hot stone and it turned into cheese. That isn't true. That's how they used to store it when they had too much milk. They didn't have fridges, David. I accept that, Rob. Yeah, so how do they turn the cheese back into milk? You, they needed you, the kilns. You can't turn cheese back into milk. Apply heat to cheese. Cheese, and what you get is melted cheese, not milk. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, do you? I know how cheese is made. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Well, you, you take milk and, and then you leave it to not, not ferment it exactly, but then you scrape up, you, you separate the curds and whey. This isn't a nursery rhyme, David. And, and then you leave it until... You they... put it in the kiln until it forms a hard skin so that it doesn't fall to what? bits. The cheese doesn't form its own skin. They put the skin on. They put the skin on? Yes! Did you hear what you just said? They put the skin on. Oh, what? So you think Edam has a particularly red skin because of the temperature they bake the milk at? I'm not claiming to be a fucking scientist, David. I just know they don't put the... How, how do they put the skin I on? I don't know how they put the fucking skin on. Well, what are we talking about, then? I didn't start it. You've got a problem, no, mate. You've got a problem. You've, you've got, got a problem. problem. You've, you've got, got a problem. problem. You've got a problem. Lot of anger. You've got a problem. Lot of anger. Lot of anger. You've got a problem.